All right, and today's we're gonna uh, hone the cylinders. I think I'm gonna wait and polish the crank until after the cylinders are honed. This is what I am going to use to polish the, the crank. I think that that will be adequate. And I can't find my leather, that little leather strap I used to use, but I'll use this because, I, you know, I can just run it back and forth on the, sorry, I didn't mean to get the sandpaper in your way, back and forth on the journal as I do it, but I'm going to set this to where it doesn't get any other grit on it, so I'm going to put it in the car. Crank out. I don't like setting cranks on their side, so I set it in the flywheel when I'm out of the engine and I think I'm going to move the flywheel so I don't bump it and I think I'm going to move the radiator so if I bump the crank it doesn't go through the radiator so let me uh, just move some things around here I'm also going to knock those cam bearings out and I might do that first I don't know we'll see I might hone it first and that way uh you know, then knock the bearings out, but I got the, took the <coughs> drain plugs out of the block, so, you know, I can clean everything super nice, clean these edges, I really uh, blew out the cooling jackets with compressed air and stuff really well, and then I'll get them really good with hot water and detergent. This thing is going to clean up nice. Sorry, right, let me get it flipped over. Now my battery, if it goes dead, sorry, I have I need to get new batteries. The, the, um, they'll show like all the bars up and then I'll start recording. There's some more crud just came out of the water jackets. Anyway, yeah, then I, I'm recording like this and all of a sudden it stops recording. This is the, by the way, the part of the cam bearing tool. I think that cam bearing might need to put a little oil on this tool, but that'll slide in. And then this lip edge is where the bearing butts and you can drive it out. That'll fit through the journal there. And you can see where the new cam bearing sits on there and then you can tap the new bearing in but you got to make sure you have the little oil gallery hole lined up because if you don't you don't have oil pressure to your cam you just wipe them out wipe out the bearing all right i'm going to do a little honing here this is the hone i'm going to use it's just a paddle hone and the re and it's got brand new stones on it and the reason why i'm going to use a paddle hone is if there's any you know, a ball hone will just rip into the cylinder wall hardcore. And this will take way less meat off. And if there is an imperfection with one of these, you'll see it. So if I do need to have the blackboard, you know, I'll physically be able to see the issue when you hone it with one of these. This is what I'm going to use for lubricant. And my drill, and I'm not going to run it terribly fast. I don't want to take too much meat off the, the cylinders, so let me get this thing situated and get a drain pan under where the cylinder I'm going to hone so that I don't make a mess all over the garage floor. I am not going to video honing all these, and I'm just going to do a couple of them on video, and I don't want to get the stuff on the camera, so... I kind of got to be careful and I don't want to go through the bottom of the bore so I kind of want to look and so these are even with the deck is about as far down as I want to go so let's uh, give it a shot. Let me uh, take you off the tripod. So you can see a little bit of where the ring ridge is 
preventing the hone from touching the bore there but that's I'm not worried about that that's fine you don't feel any of that I don't feel it with my fingernail these cross hatchings will allow oil for the rings so I'm you know I'm just giving them a quick hone that's just about the extent of what I want to do I want to take the bare minimum off these cylinders all right I just gave it a shot of WD-40 just so it doesn't rust until I can clean it up. And uh, we're going to continue on and get the rest of the cylinders. Give them a quickie hone like that. And you, you may think, oh, it needs reboring, you know. But again, this isn't rust. That's just, you know, where it's just the original color of the bore. The pistons weren't. You know, there was only one cylinder that had a stain on it from, and that was number four. That was the one that was stuck. I think it was this, this bore right in there. But, um, I think there, I don't know if you can see it or not. But anyway, the, it'll clean up all right. But I don't want the cylinders rusting. You got to clean these with dish soap and water. You can wipe them with oily rags or do whatever you want. And you don't get that grit out of those, that honing you're going to wear your rings out and be burning oil in no time so you have to use I'm going to use dish soap and hot water to wash those cylinders out oh, I forgot my spray here It looks pretty good. I think I'll just continue on. I'm getting brake cleaner in here. I can see where the WD-40s kind of run off. I'm going to continue on. i got to move my camera because I'm, I can see some stuff on it. I'm going to call that good. I don't want to take as much meat off. I just wanted to kind of rough up the cylinders so the rings, you know, would get oil and seat in. The ring ridge is not feelable, but you can see where the hone missed a little, just a little bit. Well, actually it did hone it. If you take a paper towel, you can wipe that stuff away and then you can see where I was wiping some of it away. And, uh, but I'll soap and water those really good, but I think they're, they're fine. You can see down, let me turn it upside down, hang on. All right, you can see I didn't go too hog crazy on it. You can still see some of the disc coloration from the burn you know from the varnish from the oil i just wanted to like i say give it something to seat the rings in and uh i think this will be absolutely fine this engine will run another hot like i say i could probably throw it back together with all the old parts and probably would have run another probably a 50 60 thousand so it'll run easily another hundred thousand miles without issues. If somebody keeps, you know, the oil's kept changed, you know, it's not just a mile here, a mile there, turn it off, never really warming up. That's really hard on engines when they never warm up. But if it's driven enough to where it warms up and is used on the freeway occasionally and and the oil's kept changed, this engine will easily run another 100,000 miles, maybe 200,000. And, uh, you know, if somebody's going to put three four thousand miles a year on the car do the math and i'll tell you how long this engine's gonna last so i'm you know if somebody's worried about it wants to have it bored well pay the bill and i'll have it done if you're if you're willing to step up to the plate and pay for all the machine work have it all done i'll do it but you know my my budget on this car i have a limited budget I'm, i don't have an endless bank account so I try to do the best I can 
and uh, that's what I'm doing here. This will, like I say, that will last easily 100,000 miles. And uh, the money I saved on, you know, the they, they wanted $400 to bore the block, um, plus the pistons, plus the rings, and he fits the pistons to each cylinder if I had it done. Um, and, you know, he'd do the cam bearing, but all that adds up. And for, you know, I'd rather, what, what I'm saving on this, doing it myself, will pay for the convertible top. So that's why I try and do everything on the car I can myself. If I had a machine shop and had access to the stuff to do the heads, I, believe me, I'd do them. I've done heads before. I used to use a, I think it was a new way, the valve grinder. And, uh, yeah, I used to do valve jobs. But I don't have the equipment to put the hard seats in. Um, I could change the guides, you know, that's, I could do that. But I just, I've never done installed hard uh, valve seats. So that is a process I have no knowledge on how to do. So that's why I have to pay somebody to do it. And uh, like I say, we're going to, you know, if, by doing everything myself, I save a lot of money because labor is where they get you, you know, doing that. If I fix that steering gear myself, I'll save hundreds of dollars or if I have to pay them to do it, you know. Then it, it, it just, you know, you just can't just, oh, I can, you know, pay to have a board. Well, then I can just pay to do that. Well, that takes the fun out of doing it yourself and a lot of satisfaction out of doing it yourself. So. I'm going to do the steering gear too, and I think I'm going to have to replace the bushing. I might have said that in the past videos, but I'm going to knock the cam bearings out and get all the oil plugs out. You know, there's oil plugs all over the motor. There's one, um, I'll turn it over and show you. It's an important, all right, that's the hole the distributor goes in, and you can see that little bump in there. There's an oil plug in there, and I don't know if it, if I can get it to hang on my light, just quit. Does that oil plug in there show up in the video? I don't know if it does or not, but there is an oil plug in there. You know, it's important you knock all these out. There's an oil plug. Um, that one I showed you on the bottom of the block. I got to knock the plug out of the back here for the camshaft. These are oil gallery plugs. There's four of them on the back of the motor here. Fourth one's right down here. So there's one, two, three, four, and that. And then there's a plug here, plug here. So, you know, there is quite a few. And then I'll blow lacquer thinner through all the oil galleries. You can see some of the crud that's floating around in the cooling jackets. So. Anyway, there we go. We got uh, cylinders honed, and uh, now I'm going to knock out the cam bearings. So after I knocked out the rear cam bearing and plug, I realized I had to push the wrong button on the camera, but that is the rear most cam bearing. It says Ford, and it says 5. Now, I think the FE uses the same size bearing the full length of the engine, but some engines use smaller bearings as you go that way. Like this will be the largest, not a, you know, and as you go back they get smaller. But I believe these are all uh, the same. I didn't have the little thing for the FE engine, so I had to order that. So next we'll do, hopefully this one will record. So that goes in the bearing. This little yoke goes up to hold that thing straight. Get your hammer and you just tap it out. There we go, another bearing out. Let's 
see what this one says on it. This one doesn't say anything. It says FM. That's all it says. All the writing on this cam bearing. Well, there's two bearings out. I might have to take the engine stand off to get, you know, these because, you know, I, I don't know. We'll see. Because I want to, I don't want to knock them out. Definitely to put them in, I'm going to have to take it off the engine stand. I ended up taking it off the stand because I wanted to get all the bearings out and I want to get that oil gallery plugs out. You can see this is the oil gallery for the front cam bearing. That has to be lined up with the opening in the bearing and the rest of them have a like a groove in there. But it's still a good idea to get them lined up. So I'm going to knock out all the oil galleries. I pulled the rear main out. They call it a rope seal. I'll show you why they call it a rope seal. See it's like a, like a rope. And it's two pieces, half in one cap, half in the block, and a little sealer in between the cap, and they just kind of butt up against one another. So I drill a little hole in each plug, put my slide hammer in, just pop them out, get a pair of pliers so I can get that off there, and we'll get the rest of them out. all the sludge down in there. Yeah, the oil galleries definitely need cleaning. That one's not too bad. I think these ones, the way they end, the stuff just collects in there. Whoops. Didn't thread it in enough. I run a vacuum in the plug while I'm drilling them so I don't get any metal shavings in the engine. Okay, now I can put it back on the stand. This thing's not light. It's a heavy block, but, you know, it's just easier to lift it than try and get the engine lift out again and do it. You know, on these... Ford had a problem with their cam bearings. If you ever had a 400 or a 351 Cleveland or a 351 modified and you come to a stop and the oil light comes on and you take off, the oil pressure light goes out and the oil pressure just drops off in the engine as it gets older. The problem was the cam bearings would wear out. It was just the design of the engine and uh, just caused undue wear on the cam bearings and they would wear out prematurely. This one has two oil holes in it. This is the the bearing for the other end of the engine, the front of the engine. See it's a little, a little different from the rest of the bearings. I guess I could sharpen my bit, huh? This one I could have probably taken out with a punch, but seeing I have the slide hammer out, this makes life easy, doesn't it?
This one right here I'm not going to take out. That's a special plug so that the timing chain gets lubricated. And that kit did not come with that plug, so I'm just going to clean that all out with it in. And, you know, I can still, the oil galleries go through there and go through there. And that one, the full length of the block, so I can get those, that gallery cleaned out. And then I still got to pull that plug in there. That hose was just difficult and doing it in the block was just difficult. And doing it with the camera here is difficult too, but... It polishes them up like glass, literally. I mean, when I'm done here, and I'm gonna move this around so I don't get, you know, just one area sanded. Um, but yeah, the camera's kinda in my way. And, uh, you know, and I'll flip it around a little bit and pull it from different angles and just kinda you know, this is 1500 grit. I use 600 grit when I sand paint to buff it. So, you know, it's not going to really remove anything. It's just cleaning it up. And this is, uh, you know, it's 1500, so it's not going to... Look at that. See how it shines it up? Before, after. And it's still, I'm still going to do it some more. Let me, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll go around and get them all really good, get them all polished up like chrome, and we'll call it good. But you get the idea how I'm doing it. It's very time consuming, and the camera, like I say, is totally in my way, so I gotta, I can't video this. Those journals cleaned up really super nice. They're like mirrors. Now they have that on them because I sprayed it in every single one of the oil galleries and around here to clean that 1500. Didn't want to clean that goop off. That will. And uh, so I sprayed it there. And this rear main area right here was super nasty and I don't want to scrape it because you'll damage the crank. So I put... Uh, engine tuner on that and you can see it's already cleaning that crud off. Spray it down in the where the rope seal sits too. So that'll clean that up and around where the thrust bearing where I couldn't get the sandpaper. So that cleans the any of the gum or varnish off the you know the little uh edges in there but yeah I just shoot some of this in the oil galleries and let it soak and then I'll blow them out with lacquer thinner and of course I'll soap and water scrub this crank you can't get your sanding grit out I can't stress this enough unless you use dish soap and water oily rags will not clean it'll just move it around you have to use dish soap and water there's no getting around it if you don't the bearings will wear prematurely because that grit will be trapped in the oil and the rings will wear because the grit will be trapped in the oil in the cylinders. You have to soap and water them. I can't stress that enough. Um, so anyway, a lot of you, my user or viewers, you probably um, click off about the time I, you know, wrap up the video. But sometimes I add little tidbits to the end, and I think this is going to be one of them. I call it a day. Um, so if you like the video, hit the like button. If you want to see this car resurrected, please subscribe. And thank you for watching. So I found this, and it was the maintenance log to my dad's 59 Chevy Parkwood station wagon. And somewhere around, I have the maintenance log for a 66 Ford Country sedan that I have used in some of the thumbnails. This was the green and white parkwood that he traded in for that 66 Ford. And he bought this car, he had a 51 Ford when we lived in Ludington. And they were on their way, he worked at the state park and he was on his way back home from town and they hit a, him, my mom hit a deer and totaled the 51 Ford. So they bought this 59 Chevy station wagon. 
And uh, it's just interesting when you see some of the costs on here. I mean, shows 32,500 miles rebuilt distributor and carb, oil change rear end at 34, new air filter. Um, so we're going to just page through a few of these. January 8th, 1963, 37,318 miles that had an oil change that was $1.50. An oil filter that was a dollar sixty-eight, and a grease job that was no charge. And then it shows um, January tenth of sixty-three, thirty-seven thousand three hundred and thirty-three tailgate window lock. I remember you had problems with that. That was eleven dollars. New air filter, three dollars and forty-nine cents. Another oil change, a dollar fifty. A new fuel pump, six dollars and thirty cents. You know, so you can kind of see here, replaced exhaust pipe, um, $4. Repair speedometer, no charge. I think when it would turn, like when it turned 40,000 miles, it stuck, and you had to turn it manually to get it to continue. So you can cross over exhaust, $7. Two Sears tires, fifty-seven dollars twenty-five cents. That would have been uh, sixty-three because that's September sixty-three. This is October sixty-three. Um, headlight a dollar sixty-six. Another oil change. Another oil change. Another oil change. Or uh, two. This is August twenty-first, nineteen sixty-four. Car had 49,000 miles, two BF Goodrich tires, $50.90. Repack front wheel front wheels, $2. Check brake bands, okay. Two gallons press stone antifreeze. This is October 15th, 1964. Look at that. $3.49. Four shock absorbers were expensive, $28.95. Tailpipe, 680. That's November 2nd, 64. Spark plug, $6. Points kit, $2.60. Hopefully, you can see the thing as I'm paging through it front. Let's see. Repair kit, master brake cylinder, $1.07. Brake fluid, $1.35. We're into 65 now. He traded the car in in 68 for the 66 Ford. Oil change, grease job, and filter at Sears, $6.30. Tailgate repair again. This time it was $36.71. That was a lot of money in 1965. Um, points, cap, rotor, condenser, $2.98. That was June of 65. U joint in June of 65, $11.23. Sears muffler, $9.43. Drive line steady bearing. That car had a two piece drive shaft, so it had a bearing in it. $13. That was expensive then. Um, front right inner wheel bearing, $9.30. Check front brake bands, okay. Fan belt, $3.70. So you kind of see and all the cost of things over the years tailgate felt um, doesn't have a price some of these don't have prices tailgate adjustment two dollars fifty cents spark plugs may of 66 three dollars twelve cents and points etc 218 here may of 66 idler 650 Oil filter, $2. Extension exhaust pipe, $3. Tailpipe, $4. Grease job, grounded parking lights, front. June 13, 66, body repair plus paint touch-up, $3 for the body repair, $8 for the paint. Front wheel bearing pack, $2. Adjust brakes, $1.75. Front ball joint right, 
right rear wheel bearing, $17. Those were pressed on the axle shaft. So the total repair zero is $30.97. The car had 75,000 miles on it there, and that was July 22nd, 66. Left tie rod in. Um, two tires rear, $48. It's pushing 80,000 miles there. Installed an amp meter in 67. Voltage regulator, $5.65. Muffler, $8.55. Battery, $20. Another $1.50 oil change and $1.69 oil filter. Um, spark plugs, points. Exhaust crossover, $14. This is April of 67. Lower ball joint. 1038. These were done at Sears. Two front tires, 5069. Starter repair look at $8.50. Heat riser, no charge by Sears. Um, more. Let's see. Left rear wheel drum, 850. Front wheels repack, three dollars. Bardall, one quart, 215. That was with the oil change. Car had 86,000. This uh, 59 Chevy Parkwood station wagon had a 283 with a turbo glide and it was manual steering, manual brakes. My mom didn't start driving until 68 when they got the 66 because it had power steering and power brakes. That uh, country sedan had a 289 in the cruise-o-matic. Seal transmission, $40. Valve stud, $4. I remember one of the rocker arms would pop off occasionally and would misfire. He'd pull a valve cover and undo it. And Anyway, they put a new stud, new lifter. So the lifter was 2061 and the valve stud was $4. That was $77.80. That was an expensive repair for that error. Left rear soft plug, or freeze plug as you want to call it, $424. Um, September 9th, that's my mom's writing right there and there. So my mom must have wrote this in some of them for my dad. September 67, 95,000 miles, front wheel bearing, 645, rear brakes, $12, rotated tires, $3. Um, plugs, points, trans reseal, rear, rear seal trans, so that was... That was all, that was $7.05. Oil change, does it show up? I don't know if it does or not. I hope it does. Um, just kind of wanted a tailpipe in 68 was 9.86. Exhaust systems didn't last back in that era. And of course, you know, cars that era had points, so you had to do regular tune-ups. And that would be it. The last entry was June 3rd, 68, 98,240 miles, two Sears, 4222, and then my dad traded it in on the 66 Ford Country sedan. So I just thought I would add this, and when I find the one for the 66 Ford, I will do a video of that. I just, I looked for it for a while and couldn't find it.